tackle some of the application of the Chebyshev polynomial. The first application is economized power series. So what is economized power series all about? The, pro uh, the problem statement is given as follow. Given a polynomial of degree n, which we denote by Pn, Pn being an approximation of a given function f of x. So given such a polynomial, what we want to do, we want to economize uh, the n degree polynomial approximating f, the function f. That is, we want to reduce the number of terms in the expression of the polynomial Pn in such a way that the lower degree polynomial will still preserve a minimal loss of accuracy. Let's say, for instance, if we want to economize Pn once, that is, we want to find a lower degree polynomial, that is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to Pn, by removing an f an n degree polynomial qn from pn. And qn, the coefficient of qn, the leading coefficient of qn has to be a n. That is the same leading coefficient as the one of pn. In other words, the leading coefficient of pn is a n. And we want to subtract from Pn that leading term in such a way that Pn will be a lower degree polynomial that will still approximate the function f of x within a certain degree of precision, but, uh, within a certain um, uh, accuracy or within a certain precision. Now, how do we go about it? We have the new approximation Pn minus one, that is the polynomial of degree N minus one. The maximum error will be less than or equal to the maximum error of Pn plus the maximum of Qn. Actually, what we said is that We want we want P N. Oh, I, I cannot write here. We want it here, yeah, it is here. We want Pn minus one to be Pn from which we subtract a certain polynomial Qn. And we want the leading coefficient of Qn to be An in such a way that when we subtract Qn from Pn, that leading term will cancel out. That, that, that's the idea. We want the leading term to cancel out. So, in order to minimize the loss of accuracy, we need this maximum, that is the infinity error of the polynomial QN to be the least, that is as small as possible. And for that purpose, we want this QN, this polynomial to depend on CN because we know that Tn minimizes the error. And that is given to us by the following theorem. Of all polynomial defined on the interval AB, whose leading term or leading coefficient is one, we call that a monic polynomial, 
among all of them, cn by 2n minus 1 deviates the least from 0. In other words, if you take a polynomial of degree n, which is monic, that is a n is 1, the remaining coefficients can be arbitrary. That's why we, we compute the infimum over the a i. That is the remaining uh, coefficient from a0 up to a n minus 1 because a n is fixed to be 1, a monic polynomial. So if we take such polynomial and we compute the infinity norm, that is the distance between that polynomial and 0. So it gives just the norm of the polynomial, right? So the infinity norm of that will be achieved at this JBJF polynomial, which is a monic polynomial, because we all know from the previous class on a JBJF polynomial that the leading coefficient of Tn is 2, 2 to the n minus 1. So if we divide Tn by 2 to the n minus 1, the leading coefficient will be 1. So it will be a monic polynomial. So this minimum will be achieved for uh, the monic polynomial, uh, the Chebjev pol uh, monic polynomial of degree n, which is Tn by 2 to the n minus 1. So in other words, this is the polynomial that will minimize the, this loss of accuracy, this part. And what we said is that we want Qn, uh, the, the, the leading coefficient of Qn to be An. But we know already that the leading coefficient of Tn by 2 to the n minus 1, we know that the leading coefficient is 1. That is, it is a monic polynomial. So we just need to multiply this monic polynomial by An. If we do so, it means that we are multiplying the leading coefficient by a n, and therefore we will obtain the q n that we need. So we must choose q n to be this monic polynomial times a n. In other words, if we we multiply uh, this monic polynomial by a n, therefore, therefore the minimum, the infimum of all polynomials, no longer monic, but including the leading coefficient to be a n, will be given by q n, this q n, whereby we multiply this by a n. So this, this is how we define our p n minus 1. So from p n, we will subtract a n into Tn by 2 to the n minus 1. So this is how we'll be economizing our power series once. So we can repeat the number of minimization provided the polynomial that we obtain is within the limit. That is within the minimal loss of accuracy that we require, because we cannot just keep minimizing. Because if we keep minimizing, the loss of accuracy will increase, but we need to stop within the allowed accuracy or precision that we want, as we are going to see in the following example to illustrate uh, the above concept. Now, if we consider a Maclaurin series, which is a power series is given by this expression. Now, if we truncate after the n degree, uh, the sixth degree, that is after we, we truncate at uh, x to the six by 720, we discard the remaining terms. So we approximate our exponential function using seven terms. That is the first, uh, this is the first term, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh term. So if we use seven terms to approximate this, 
that will be our PN. PN will be P6, a six degree polynomial from our Mark Lawrence series. If we truncate at this level, we obtain P6 of X. Now, what we want to do, we want uh, to minimize or to economize this power series with a precision of 0 0.001. That is our limit. We need that precision. So in order to proceed, we know already the step that we need to follow. We will first economize once, check if we are within the li limit, that is with, with, with the, within the precision, and then we can even proceed further and check until we are no longer within the precision, then we can stop and consider the minimization or the economization that gives us the, uh, the, 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 the allowed uh, restriction. So what should we do? So since we have, we have, uh, we approximate e to the x with a six degree polynomial. So if you want to minimize by canceling the six degree term, this six degree monomial, we need to use t, t6. Right, so we we'll use T6. So our N will be six, and then we will divide by two to the six minus one, that is two to the five. Two to the five is 35. Right. So this is the term. This is our T6 by two to the N minus one, that is 32. Now we saw that we need to multiply this polynomial, this Chebyshev polynomial by an. Now, what is our an? Our an in the in P6, we can see that the leading coefficient is one by 720, which is this one. So this is our an. So we multiply C6x divided by two to the six minus one by a n, which is one by 720. So this is our Q n. So we will subtract that expression from P6 to obtain P5. That will be our first economized power series. So if we perform that, this is our expression of T6. We subtract Q6 from P6. For that purpose, uh, this, this is what we obtain. Mm -hmm. So this is our P6, and we subtract An times T6 divided by two to the six minus five, that is two to the five, which is 32. So this is the new polynomial that we obtain after computation. This is our P5. This is the expression of P5. Now, if we compute the truncated series and look at the maximum error that, uh, that, that will be performed, that will be incurred, the error. So we know already that the maximum error for, for this expression is unity, right? The maximum error for, for Chebyshev divided by this will be unity. That will be the maximum. And we will have to divide that by 32. Right, this is what we say here. Why is the maximum uh, uh, unity? We all know that po uh, Chebyshev polynomial has a maximum value of one. It is, uh, you can see here, that is a maximum. So over the interval, a negative one, one, regardless of the degree of the polynomial, the maximum will be unity will be one. So now if we divide, C6 by 32, the maximum for that will be 
one by twenty two uh, by by thirty two. Sorry. Yeah. So it will be one one by thirty two, and then we multiply by one by 720. So this will be the maximum error that we will be able to incur by choosing, by performing this economization. So this will be the maximum. And if we compute this maximum, we can see that it will be less than 0. 0. 0.0, uh, what is that accuracy? We, we see that we are uh, within a certain precision. This is our precision. So you can see that this value here is far much smaller than our precision, which is required. Our required precision is 0. 0.001, but this product, the maximum error incurred when we perform this economization. Uh, when we perform this economization, this will be the maximum error incurred, this one. So we are still within the required precision. Okay, now we can compare uh, the result obtained so far with the Maclaurin, with the fifth degree Maclaurin polynomial. Because this is a economized fifth degree polynomial. Now, if you compare that with the fifth degree Maclaurin, what do we see? This is the, the this is a sixth degree Maclaurin. This is a fifth degree economized power series. So if we compute uh, the fifth degree, the maximum error, this one, the maximum error will be 0 0.3025. But the sixth degree, I mentioned here the fifth degree. Yeah, but in, the, in our computation, we have a, I use the, the sixth degree, which, which is this initial pol uh, polynomial. Uh, this initial trunk uh, power series truncated uh, after the seventh term. So if you compute the initial truncated polynomial, the maximum error for that expression will be 0 0.3025, uh, But the economized, this one, the economized power series, if we compute that, we can see that the maximum error for the fifth degree is 0 0.3027. You can see that with a fifth degree polynomial, which is which has less term compared to the sixth degree polynomial, the error, the maximum error, they, they are of the same magnitude. It's almost similar. You can see that uh, 3023 and 3027 are almost similar. Okay, now what if we proceed further? If we proceed further with a fifth degree polynomial, we use this fifth degree polynomial and we proceed further to obtain a fourth degree polynomial, meaning that we will use T5. And we know that the leading coefficient of T5 is 16. And then we divide by that and we multiply by this coefficient because we want to get rid of that to obtain a lower degree polynomial. So if we perform that, we obtain a fourth degree economized power series. And as an exercise, we can show that the error will be 
0 0.000781. And if you look at this uh, at this um, error, are we still within the the requirement? If we if we look at our requirement here, yes, we are still within the limit because we said the precision should be zero point double zero one. So that's how we can proceed. And uh, for that fourth degree economized power series, we can see here. If we compute the maximum error, which I mentioned here to be 0 0.000781, is given by this. And how do we compute that maximum error? We take uh, the difference between the exponential, we compute the infinity norm of exponential x minus the fourth degree. Similarly for this, so that's how we compute all these norms. You can see that it is still good enough. You can see triple zero seven eight, even though it is large compared to the fifth degree polynomial. But now, if we compute, if you, as I mean for a comparison purpose, if we compute the corresponding fourth degree Maclaurin approximating polynomial, you can see that. The error is very bad here. We are not longer within the precision here. You can see that the maximum error will be 0 0.00999, and which is greater than the, the required precision here. The required precision should be 0 0.001. So any error should be less than this. We should not exceed it. But if you look at this already, 009 is already greater, is larger than 001, 0.001. So this is a very bad approximation. Whereas if you use the fourth degree economic power series or polynomial, we are still within the limit. So this is one of the application of uh, uh, Chebyshev uh, polynomial. It allows us to minimize uh, power series. And this is used extensively in the industry and in the, in the application. So uh, the next section, which is also part of the application of uh, Chebyshev power series, is uh, Chebyshev series. Right. Chebyshev series is what we are going to tackle now. So what is Chebyshev series? Chebyshev series is just a series that is written in terms of Chebyshev polynomial. To be better illustrate, uh, when we perform uh, a Taylor series expansion of a given function within uh, a neighborhood, we expand that function in terms of monomials of the form x to the k. So the basis of expansion are the monomials x to the k. So our gk, right, to comply with uh, uh, the generalized uh, the generalized least square method, the gks are monomial x to the k. So if we use such an expansion, this is what we call Taylor expansion. Now, if you replace the XK with Chebyshev polynomials, we obtain a series that is called Chebyshev series. Okay, now the idea, the idea is that if we can express all the X to the Ks in terms of Chebyshev polynomial and substitute back into the, the Taylor expansions uh, of, of the function f of x, we will obtain uh, the Chebyshev series of e e expansion of, of f of x. Obviously here, f is defined over the interval negative one, one. If f is defined over an interval a, b, we have to perform a change of variable. 
and obtain the corresponding ex uh, expansion. So we will assume that f is defined over the interval negative one one. Okay. Now uh, to illustrate uh, what I just mentioned, that is x uh, substituting all the x to the k by a linear combination of the Chebyshev polynomial and substitute in our series, we obtain something. So as an, uh, an example, if we consider uh, the exponential function, which is given by this Maclaurin expansion, which is a, uh, a particular form of Taylor's expansion uh, in the neighborhood of zero. So for this particular case, if we just consider uh, the seven terms in this expansion, we can express each of these monomials, that is one x, x squared up to x six and above using this uh, linear combination of Chebyshev polynomial. Now, if you substitute this expression in uh, this uh, series expansion, as you can see here, we substitute and we group the terms, we obtain something of this form, which is in terms of Chebyshev polynomials. Now, if we substitute, of course, in this case, we, we, we can't go to infinity. It's just a few terms that we will look at. So if we substitute back T0, T1, T2, and T3 by the values, we'll obtain an expansion of this form. Right, okay. Now there's a caveat in this approach. In this approach, we cannot we cannot uh, substitute an arbitrary power of k. Let's say, for instance, in the expression of uh, let's say x to the ten, we will surely get some of this term t zero, t one, t two, up to t to the ten. But when you substitute, generally that, that x to the 10 or x to the six, like in this case, some of them will not be substituted in our approximation. So meaning that the t, the coefficient of t zero that we obtain here is not that accurate. It's not an accurate approximation. Even this coefficient of t one, this coefficient of t two is just, a simple approximation, the, the, the approximation is not accurate because there are terms that we did not substitute in this expansion. But still, it can be allowed because it gives us a considerable approximation, but not a good approximation. So in order for us to obtain a good approximation of a given function, we will need to proceed differently. We will need to use the fact that Chebyshev polynomial are orthogonal. And from equation 137, which is this expansion, we can compute all these coefficients, aj, by multiplying both equations by, let's say, tk, and use and integrate and use the fact that Chebyshev polynomial are orthogonal. So if we do that, we will, come, we will obtain all the coefficient a0, a1 up to a infinity. Of course, when I say a infinity, meaning for large larger subscript, using these two uh, formula given by equation 138 and 139. So they will give us these two expression. As an application, let's say we want to find Chebyshev series expansion of the function f of x equal to pi square root of one minus x squared for x in the interval negative one, one. So if you want to do that, we know already that the expansion of our function f of x will be of the form of given by equation 1.37, this one. So the only thing we need to determine are the coefficient aj. So we can compute a zero, a1 up to A infinity using these two expressions. So if we use uh, equation one, 
point three a to compute a zero. A zero will give us the integral. So we take this function f of x, we substitute here in the numerator of equation one point three a. You can see that this expression, we have pi n squared to one minus x squared. So it will cancel out with this denominator. The, this denominator, cancel out with this denominator. This pi will cancel with this pi. So we will be left with the integral of what? dx, because f of x and this will cancel out and pi also will cancel out. So we are left with the coefficient of one. So the coefficient, uh, the integrand is just one. So we will integrate from negative one to one, one times dx, which is exactly what we have here. So the antiderivative of dx is x. So we integrate x from negative one to one, the result is two. So a, is, a is sub zero is two. Now, to compute a one, uh, a sub one, two up to infinity, we will use the second equation given by formula 1.39. Similarly, if we substitute f of x given by this expression, you can see that here we will get, um, there is a two, there is a two, is two, yeah. There is a two here in front. I omitted two here, there's two here in front. So, this pi will cancel out with this pi and uh, f of x will cancel with this. So in this expression, we'll be left with two integral from negative one to one, tjx and tjx dx, what is it? tj will be cosine j r cosine x. So that's what we get here with a two here in front that I omitted. Now the integral depends on x, so now we will use a change of variable, x equal to cosine theta. So dx will be negative sine theta d theta. So if we substitute that into the integral, we obtain this. Obviously, when x is uh, negative one, theta will be pi. And when x is one, theta will be zero. So if we, are re if we rearrange this, the negative, you can see that we are integrating from pi to zero. With the negative, we can interchange the limit of integration. And uh, there will be a negative in front. With this negative, the negative will cancel out. Finally, we will get the integral from zero to pi sine theta cosine j theta dx. So we can easily integrate this using a trigonometric identity. And that uh, trigonometric identity is, we have here sine, theta can be set, we can call this A and this B. So if we use the trigonometric identity, sine A times cosine B is equal to one half, cos, uh, I'm sorry, is equal to one half, one, half, which is a factor of the following sum, sine a plus b plus sine a minus b. So if we perform that one half with the two in front here, so these two and the one half will cancel out. So we will obtain the integral of the, this two sum. A, we can see that A is theta, B is J theta. So if we add theta plus j theta, it will be one plus j factor of theta. Oh, sorry, which I omitted also here. So there is a theta here in front. And similarly for a minus b, it will be j, uh, one minus j theta, d theta. So if we integrate this before doing that, we need to distinguish uh, the case where j is one because this will cancel out and the case where j is different from one. So if we do that, when j is one sine, one minus j will be zero. So we we'll be left here with um, j equal to one, one plus one, two. So it will be sine two theta. And at least this time, I did not forget, theta is present there. So 
we know that the antiderivative of sine two theta is negative cosine two theta by two. If we integrate from zero to pi, cosine of two pi is one and cosine of zero is also one. So when we take the difference, it will be zero. So A is one is just zero. Now, if J is different from one, we th this sign will not be zero. Sign of one minus J theta will not be zero. So we can integrate these two function. The antiderivative here will be cosine one plus J theta, which I omitted, divided by one plus J plus cosine of one minus J by uh, of course, uh, cosine of one minus j into theta, which I omitted here, divided by one minus j. Obviously, there's a, a negative sign in front, as you can also see here on top. There will be a negative sign. Now, if we evaluate that from zero to pi, we obtain this term, which we can group as follows. So that is our a sub j. Now, if we take, if we collect these two values, a0, which is 2, and a sub j for j starting from 2 to infinity because j uh, a sub 1 is 0. So if we collect that and substitute back into the expansion of the function, we will obtain the following. Uh, a0, because a0 will be multiplied by t0, and we know that t0 x is 1. So we have 2 plus the summation of aj tj. aj is given by this, where j starts from two. We have this aj, which is given by this uh, term. We, we insert it here. And that is it. So we obtain our expansion. So we will stop here for today. And we will continue uh, shortly with the, the next topic, Fourier series and trigonometry polynomial. Thank you for your kind attention. God bless you and see you very soon.